I'm gonna tell you how I went from delivering pizza to making over $30 million and all the ups and downs in between. I'll share the various business models I tried before hitting it big with the one that made me a millionaire, the mistakes I made, and insights on how you can do it faster than I did. I grew up in a lower middle class family. My dad's radio career took a hit when the industry went streaming and that put us in a tough spot financially. But in my 20s, I faced more financial struggles than my parents ever did. But now in my 30s, I own multiple million dollar homes around the world. I retired my parents and I can pretty much do whatever I want. Life's been amazing. And the journey from where I started to where I am now has been nothing short of incredible. And I'm so excited to share it with you today so that you can learn from it too. The first $100 I made was by pure accident, but it ended up paying for my entire college education. So I was studying audio engineering in college and it was tough. I had a Chevy Blazer that chugged gas. The cost of the classes was enormous and just the general cost of living, I could barely afford it. I was super close to dropping out. But then one day I'm hanging out at Guitar Center and I meet this guy who was buying equipment for his home studio. And I ended up giving him some advice and he was so impressed by that advice that he offered to pay me $100 an hour to come to his house and show him how to set up his home studio. Easiest 100 bucks I ever made and I thought, why not try to turn this into a business to pay my way through college? So I slap some ads up on Craigslist and I offer Zoom sessions for 50 bucks an hour to show you how to use your home recording software. And I ended up getting so slammed that I had to start outsourcing it to other instructors. I paid them $25 an hour, I kept $25 an hour, and I had a nice little business going. That was until I got called into the Dean's office. Turns out they changed the amount of credits that you needed to graduate and they wanted me to stay an entire extra year to get my diploma. And I didn't even realize they were allowed to do that, but I'll be honest with you, I got super pissed off. I told the Dean where to shove it and I walked out. I was so angry that I just wasted four years of my life in college that I ended up selling the company for a measly two grand to one of the instructors at the college. I just wanted to be done with it. I just needed out, you know? Now dropping out of college after four years might seem dumb, but it ended up being a smart move and here's why. Shortly after I walked away, the school got sued for faking their credentials. It was a whole thing. There was a class action lawsuit. The school ended up getting shut down and I got a letter with a refund for $25. I spent 70 grand on college and I got $25 back. The lawyers got the rest. And this really taught me a valuable lesson. It's that scams can occur at any level. Just because it's college doesn't mean you can't get scammed. So there I was back at home with my parents, jobless, diplomaless, feeling incredibly frustrated and just not knowing what the next step in my life is. And it was like the first time that I felt like my whole world was crashing down, that I had worked to build something and somebody just walked down and kicked it like a sandcastle and destroyed it. Then one day I stumbled on an ad in a magazine and it changed everything. It was an ad for a business opportunity for starting your own airbrush tattoo business. They sold you the stencils and the designs and you got this little cart and the airbrushes and you would basically go to carnivals and you would charge 10, 20 bucks a pop for these fake tattoos and you could also book birthday parties, things like that. So I buy the cheapest package, which was like 1500 bucks and I go out and book my first festival. I set up my booth, put up my sign and I start making good money, like two to three grand a week. One time I did the Collier County Fair and I made three grand in a day. But then I start talking to the other vendors around me and I make friends with them and I'm noticing that the food vendors, the guys selling cotton candy and Italian ice and kettle corn, they have like a line 30, 40, 50 deep. And as I start making friends with them, they tell me things and I realize that they're making way more money than me. I mean, the margins on food at these festivals and carnivals is insane. So I take the money I made and I start buying Italian ice carts, kettle corn machines, popcorn machines, and I start doing that. And yes, I start making more money. The problem was I was on the road constantly. I had no life. I mean, my entire life was hanging out with carnies all day, not exactly the dream and i tried to hire people but that didn't work and i just ended up doing everything myself and then one day it hits me 
yeah, I'm making money, but not the kind of money I want to live the life I want to live. And in order to make that money, I was living a life I definitely didn't want to live. Plus, I was burnt out completely fried. So I call it quits, I sell off everything, and I realized later, yeah, I could have sold the whole business for a lot more, but I was young and dumb and I, I just didn't realize that. Here's the lesson. Every time you try to level up, there's a new level of resistance. And I didn't know how to deal with it. I should have read up on how to hire and fire and how to expand operations and just learn what I needed to learn to take that concession business and scale it without me being there. But no, I got frustrated and I bailed. How many times have you done something and you got frustrated and you just quit even though you could have really done something with it? Well, that was me. Completely fed up on being a business owner, I go to where my dad was working, Pizza Hut. When streaming killed the radio, my dad's radio station could not pay his salary anymore and he figured out he could actually make a lot more money delivering pizza with a lot less stress. So he switched to delivering pizza and that's where he got me a job. And I stayed there for seven years. And my girlfriend at the time was not thrilled. She was sick and tired of dating a loser. So in an effort to keep her around, I say, hey, let's just pack everything up and move to Chicago. Let's start a new life. I'll get a good job up there. It'll be great. You know, the, those things you tell girls just, just to barely hang on to the relationship. So we pack up, we move, and I try to get a better job. But of course, I can't. So what do I do? end up working back at Pizza Hut. But instead of delivering pizza in Florida where it's warm, now I have to deliver pizza in the freezing cold in Chicago. Every single night, I'm searching for a way to make money. I'm searching for different jobs, I'm searching for how to make money online, and I'm just spending all my time doing that, leaving very little time for my girlfriend. So now we've moved, I still have a crappy job, and I'm not spending time with her. And it put a real strain on the relationship. So. In order to cool down, she goes on a three-day trip with her family and friends. The day she comes back, I'm on a delivery run. And this one, this one changes everything. His name was Gupta. He's at the edge of our delivery zone. It's negative 16 degrees outside. I have to drive all the way to his condo. His elevator was broken, so I walk up 15 flights of stairs. And then I realize that I forgot his ketchup and mustard. I don't know who puts ketchup and mustard on a pizza anyway. And I think I forgot a two liter. And so I had to go all the way back to the store, get that stuff, go all the way back to his condo, walk all the way back up and down the stairs, and the guy stiffs me. Now, I don't know what it was about that day because I had been thinking about quitting my job for a long time. It was just, that was the day that broke the straw on the camel's back. And in that moment, I decided I was never going to rely on someone else's generosity to pay my bills. And you know that moment where you haven't actually done anything, but you know upstairs you've made the commitment. Like this time you did it. You made the commitment to change and you get excited about it because for the first time you're like, holy crap, I'm actually gonna do this. So I head home and I'm pumped. I'm excited. I can't wait to tell my girlfriend like, hey, babe, this is it. This, this is like, this is the moment. And then I see it. The worst thing I could possibly see. All of her bags packed by the door. Turns out, while she was on a trip, she met someone else and decided, I'm a lost cause. I'm, I'm, I'm crushed. One moment I felt like I was on top of the world and the next, I'm in the middle of a nightmare. And you know, par part of me wanted to give up again. Part of me wanted to just use that as an excuse to go back to my safety cocoon of a paycheck and just, just give up. Like, wh what's the point if I don't have anybody to share it with? And then it hits me. This is just another test in leveling up in life. I wanna hit a new level, so I hit a new level of resistance. And this time I decided to just see it through. I'm, I'm finally starting to get it. So I start hunting for a more professional job. I mean, I'm, I'm spending weeks on end doing this. Then I spot an ad for a sales gig, once again, in Craigslist, and it was for $50,000 a year, which back then was actually decent coin. I jump on it actually passed the job interview and they end up flying me up to New Jersey for training. And that's when I realized I was in the presence of legends. You remember Billy Mays, the OxyClean guy? Hi, Billy Mays here for OxyClean. This was the company where he got his start. They train pitchmen. And my sales manager was actually Billy's sales manager. So I got to learn from the guy that trained Billy Mays. 
Now the gig was selling pots and pans at department stores like Costco and Sam's Club. So I spent two weeks learning this script, which was basically like a cooking show, but designed to sell you this overpriced cookware. So finally, it's showtime. We went to Sam's Club, we set up our booth, my sales manager goes over and gets on the intercom and says, attention Sam's Club shoppers, there's a cooking show on aisle five in five minutes. So people start to gather around the booth and I start getting crazy nervous. I'm sweating bullets, I'm thinking of all the people that told me I was gonna fail in life, all this stuff. And I tell my manager, I don't think I can do this. These people are not gonna listen to me. I look like I'm 12. I, I, I don't even have a good haircut. And I just really lost all my confidence in that moment. So he walks up to me and I'm thinking he's gonna give me this like, you know, Kevin Costner pep talk. And instead he gets in my face and he says, listen, you little sh We spent all this money flying you up, putting you up, training you. And he holds up a paper. And he says, you see this script right here? We spent millions of dollars in over a decade perfecting the words on this page. Do you think you're that friggin' special that you're gonna read these words and it works for everybody else, but it's not gonna work for you? And I was like, uh, okay. So I get up there and I just, out of fear, do what I was trained to do and say the script. Lo and behold, I end up making $1,500 in commissions that day, far more than I've ever made delivering pizza. In one day, I'm blown away. I end up doing this for two years, make a bunch of cash, but once again, I'm on the road. I'm traveling, I hate my life, and I quit and moved back to Florida to be with my family more. But here's the part of the story where I made my first dollar online. A dollar that turned into over $30 million. I'm sitting at home and I'm thinking, man, I gotta figure out a way to make money without having to be on the friggin' road all the time. That's when I stumble across affiliate marketing. So I end up creating this blog, you know, where you like start a blog and you review products. And then if people buy those products through your special link, you get a commission. Well, that's what I did. And at the time I was quitting smoking using electronic cigarettes. So I thought, well, how about I review electronic cigarettes, sign up for one of their affiliate programs and make some money that way. So I start buying courses on affiliate marketing and I splurge, I buy a bunch of courses. I follow all the steps and I don't make a dime. I couldn't get anybody to actually read my blog. And then one day I meet this kind of shady character on an underground internet marketing forum. And he had this software that would blast all these links out to get websites ranked for certain keywords. And we ended up becoming friends. And one day he's like, hey man, do you want me to just blast your site and get you ranked? It was like overnight, I was a somebody. Even though it really wasn't me. <laughs> that did it. It was this guy who just used this software. And then Google hits me with a nuclear bomb. They end up changing the algorithm and my website went from number one in Google to pretty much not on Google at all. All of my traffic disappeared overnight and so did my commissions. I went from making 30 grand a month to making pretty much nothing. And because at the time I was clueless about SEO, I'm left with a little pile of cash but no skills to grow that cash. That's when I made the biggest investment of my life and it paid off. So one day I'm taking my dog to the groomer and I noticed that there's this abandoned bar and it had liquor, tables, equipment. I could see in the window, it was abandoned, it was closed down. So I go to the leasing office and I'm like, what's the deal with this bar? And she says, oh, they couldn't pay their rent. And so we had to shut them down. And all of a sudden I got this idea, I said, if I write you a check for the rent, can I lease this place and get all the equipment included with it? And she goes, sure. So I hand her a check, rush home, and I start binge watching Bar Rescue to learn everything I can about the bar business. Now my family thinks I'm absolutely insane. They tell me that 99% of bars fail in the first year in Florida. They tell me that restaurants are the hardest industry in the world, and everybody thinks I'm just gonna completely lose my ass. Once again, nobody believed in me. Everybody thought I was crazy with my dreams and ideas, but I'm a maniac, so I proceed. Anyway, I spent about 50 grand affiliate money I had saved up to remodel the place. And that's where I started learning social media marketing. And I used it to grow my bar, blow it up, and it became the hottest spot in town. I sold it 14 months later for a $300,000 profit. Plus I made about two grand a week just owning the bar. And the best part is this location had failed for 80 years. I was the first person to actually make it work. 
I'm riding high, man. I'm on a cloud friggin' nine. I think I'm the best thing since sliced bread. But then, life teaches me a harsh lesson. Now that I have this cash, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna invest it. I'm gonna be an investor. So I invest the cash and I lose nearly all of it. I won't get super into that, but here's the lesson I learned. When you're trying to climb the ladder, climb it one step at a time. Don't try to skip five steps, because if you do, you're gonna fall and break your back. And for me, I went from a successful local business owner and tried to jump up to this investor, which is way further up the ladder. I should have just started another business that was a little bit more challenging than that business and worked my way up. The principle is don't try to grow your goals ahead of your skills. Try to grow your skills ahead of your goals. Now, what I attempted next sounds really dumb, but it made me a lot of money. So I start making my own t-shirt designs, really funny ones like, it's not you, it's your face, or Captain Picard on the toilet and it says, Captain's Log. The problem was I couldn't get anybody to buy my stuff on Amazon. I listed it, but nobody was buying it. And then lightning strikes. So I'm a massive Walking Dead fan. And at the time there was an episode where the character Glenn had fallen off of a dumpster and looked like he may or may not have died. So I get this crazy idea and I write a blog post literally 10 minutes after the episode ends. And the title is, Is Glenn Dead? Six Reasons Why He's Not. I go in all the Walking Dead Facebook groups with hundreds of thousands of fans and I just post it. I'm like, did you guys see this blog post? Boom, hundreds of thousands of views to the post. Now underneath the post, I had a little advertisement that said, love the Walking Dead, then you'll love this shirt. Overnight, we're selling hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these shirts. So I call my dad up and I'm like, you gotta help me print these things. So we start turning them out, turning them out, turning them out. And next thing you know, we have a six figure t-shirt brand overnight. But then we got attacked by China. Out of nowhere, these Chinese sellers hijack my Amazon listing and they start selling knockoffs of my brand, super low quality. And so the reviews on my Amazon page tank and my business just gets murdered. And every time we went through the three week process of having Amazon remove a fake seller, three more popped up in its place and the business just died. And I ended up selling all the equipment to a friend of mine for basically pennies on the dollar. Here's the lesson. Never tie your business to someone else's business. Make sure that whatever you sell can stand on its own because if anything happens with that other business, they go out of business, they change the rules, whatever, now you are screwed. And it happened to me twice, one with Google with my affiliate marketing blog and now with Amazon. Worked my butt off twice only to have it ripped away yet again. I'm, I'm at rock bottom, totally defeated, totally clueless about what to do next. Then I met someone that gave me an idea that turned into millions and millions of dollars. So I end up meeting this beautiful Turkish girl on Tinder and we start dating. And her father was actually really wealthy in Turkey, but he didn't spend a lot of time with her when she was young. So she kind of like hated rich people. She wanted the simple life. Now I was broke as a joke, so that was perfect for me. And she was way out of my league. It just, it didn't even make any sense. But we end up tying the knot at the courthouse because we could not afford a normal wedding. And we began our life broke. It was cute at first, but then it got serious. We couldn't feed ourselves. We couldn't keep the electric on. It was bad. So I ended up taking one of these little single shirt printers that I had left. And I made a shirt that said, water $1. And I went out and I bought some water at Walmart and I tried to sell it on the side of the road just to keep the electric on. Well, I didn't realize there's this little outfit called 7-Eleven that took all my business. Apparently nobody wants to give money to a weirdo on the side of the road. So I come home just completely defeated. And then bam, knock at the door. There's a guy from the IRS handing me a $250,000 bill for back taxes. My accountant that did my taxes when I had the bar, she died in the middle of doing them. And so it was a big mess. We were missing a bunch of documents. And now the IRS was suing me for a quarter million dollars. I was literally about to give up on breathing. My wife sits me down and she gets super real with me. She says, Dan, you are good at making money on the internet. But when you try to make money elsewhere, it doesn't do well. You need to sit down 
open your laptop and figure that out. She offers to work three jobs to support us for as long as it takes for me to figure out how to make stable money online. And she was right, cotton candy machine. You can only make so much money with a bar. So I take my wife's advice reluctantly because I, she's now working and I'm not. And I, it just feels absolutely terrible as a man, terrible. But that's what I did. And after six months of trial and error, it happens. I finally realized that what I'm really good at is I'm a writer. Every single time I had made money, I had made it by writing, somehow stringing words together for profit. The affiliate blog, yeah, someone else got me the traffic, but I converted that traffic into sales with my writing. The airbrush tattoo business, I wrote brochures that I handed out at the carnival and I got people to come to my booth. The bar was all social media marketing that was once again, writing. The t-shirt company was writing on a blog and getting lots of traffic and then getting people to buy my shirts. Heck, even the money I made as a pitch man was because I was reading a script that somebody wrote. And my wife realized this too. And she's like, why don't you just help other businesses get customers? So that's what I did. I started doing freelance copywriting. I did ads, I did emails, I did landing pages and website copy. And we ended up scaling that to about $25,000 a month. And it was all from my laptop just doing this. Life's looking up. Finally got food on the table, electrics on, even booked a cruise for me and my wife. But then the real money opportunity came. People start asking me, how am I making money as a freelancer and with my agency? And I'm like, ooh, wait a minute. There's gold in selling information and courses. Now I get it, I get it. Course sellers get a bad rap, but here's the thing. Making internet money completely changed my life. And if I can share that with somebody else and change their life and charge a reasonable fee, well then why not? I mean, I've been through hell and back and internet money is the only thing that's ever consistently worked for me. And I love teaching other people how to do it too. So I read a bunch of books on how to create effective sales pitches and webinars. I launched my first course and bam, we end up doing over $100,000 the very first month. We did 2.9 million that first year and Life went bananas. We bought new cars. I ended up getting a Lamborghini, which killed my back. Terrible, terrible, terrible purchase. Completely ego-driven. Now I have a Tesla. We bought our first million dollar house on the water, this beautiful mini mansion. And again, it all came down to words. I mean, I wrote courses. I wrote webinars. I felt like one of the highest paid writers in the world. And then the best moment of all, my wife gives birth to our beautiful son, Bruce. But the happiness didn't last for long. Success hit me like a freight train. The money, the internet fame, the lawyers, the accountants and the this and the that, it just, it just overwhelmed me and I ended up dropping the ball as a husband. Eventually my wife had enough and we ended up calling it quits just six months after my son was born. A divorce, six months after having a kid. It hit me harder than I ever imagined. I went spiraling into a dark hole of depression. And unfortunately, I decided to cope with booze and parties. Other than that, I just got obsessed with my work and I ended up stacking cash. I ended up furthering my skills. I learned how to do stage selling. I ended up making a million dollars in a single day from stage. But honestly, it was still a really terrible life because I was making horrible financial decisions. I bought a $2 million yacht cash. I was partying and drinking every night and just living this, this Dan Blazarian life. And no matter how amazing it may have seemed or maybe even how it may have felt at the time when I went home at the end of the day, I felt an incredible pit in my stomach, zero fulfillment. And I was just unhappy. I tried to be the best dad I could. I tried to keep my business afloat because it was going crazy, but then it all just came to a head and started to fall apart. And then it hit me. This was not the life I wanted. This flashy, you know, oversized man-child life was just not what I wanted. No amount of partying or, or women or any of that could fill the void. All I really wanted was to sit on the couch with my wife and son in our PJs and watch a movie. So I started trying to get my wife back. I must've asked her 300 times. And at one point she told me she would rather light herself on fire than remarry me. Ouch. 
And that's when I learned a lesson that every soul on this planet should learn about chasing their dreams. You can't just want things. You have to become the person that deserves them. I realized I didn't deserve my wife back. I was begging, I was pleading, I was scheming, but I wasn't really changing who I was. So one day I woke up and I dumped $10,000 worth of alcohol in the drain, quit drinking, haven't drank since. I cut ties with all my party animal friends. I didn't go out anymore and I focused on myself. Slowly but surely, my wife started to notice. We began rebuilding our bond and eventually she agreed to marry me again. Life got sweeter, my bond with my son got stronger and I was just happier. And my business started to thrive as a result. So yeah, making $30 million in my business may sound like a big accomplishment, but the real accomplishment was getting my family back, becoming the man that I aspired to be. This is a story of redemption. If you want things you've never had, you have to be willing to do things you've never done to become the person that deserves them. Now, if I had to wrap all these lessons up with a bow, here is what I would tell you. Number one, learn a skill that allows you to make money in various business models, not just one. For me, that was copywriting. Number two, focus not on what you want, but who you have to become to deserve it. Number three, stay away from business models with built-in income ceilings. Go for the ones that have limitless income potential. And lastly, don't procrastinate. Time is ticking, my friends. Start now before it's too late. Oh, and if you're curious about the easiest way to make some internet cash right now, even if you're a total newbie, I'll leave a link in the description where you can check out a video where I break down the entire business model. Thanks for watching.